Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, we have another special episode for you. A few months back, Council Member Jamani Williams hosted a Women's Appreciation Month where he celebrated women here in the city doing fantastic things. Of course, Beyond Focus TV was live on location, getting up close and personal interviews and all the one-on-one -on -one details for you at home. We actually had the pleasure to get to speak to a lot of the celebrities who are on site, including Angela Yee from Power 105.1 FM and our very own First Lady, Charlene McRae. So keep it right here. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Let's go straight to Councilmember Jamani Williams opening the ceremony. More importantly, I'm pastor of Judah International Christian Center. And if you don't mind, if you can, stand to your feet for the invocation. And someone would say, well, why, why do we have to stand for the invocation? Well, if we were at the White House and the president came in, we'd stand up. And if we were at the courthouse and the judge came in, we'd stand up. And so if we want to invoke the, the presence of the Almighty, I think we could stand. Yes. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless you on tonight and magnify your name. We thank you for the purpose for which we've come on tonight, and that is to celebrate women, to celebrate women of distinction. We ask that you would watch over us on tonight. We thank you for those that have been chosen on tonight. They've come through journeys, they've come through storms, but they're still standing. They put themselves aside in order that they might be able to help and embrace someone else, and so we thank you. We invoke your presence on tonight because we know that without you, we can do nothing. And without you, we fail. But when we call on the Almighty, you show up and you give us everything that we need. And so we thank you for our council member on tonight, Jemani Williams. We ask that you would continue to give him vision in order to be able to celebrate women, not just in this borough and in this city, but even across this country. We thank you for the sponsors. We thank you for those who have worked diligently in order to bring this night to fruition. So, Lord, we ask that you would continue to watch over us, bless us. Let our coming not be in vain. There are women who came and they rushed from work, didn't have time to eat. There are men who are here that love the women of distinction, and we thank you for them as well. So we ask that you would be in our midst that when we leave, that we would be better for being here, that someone will go home with some peace, someone will go home with your presence, someone will go home with your power, and we will go all go home being fulfilled. We thank you and we praise you in the name of the Messiah, in the name of the teacher, in the name of Christ, amen. 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 Tonight, I'm waiting for the day well, we won't need Women's History Month, we won't need Black History Month. We'll be able to just celebrate history all the way around. Uh, but until that day comes, we're going to take this time uh, to celebrate people who may not get the recognition they deserve. Uh, I am one who knows that uh, sometimes there are men in the front pretending like they're doing stuff. It is the women uh, in any organization that I've ever been in that have actually gotten the work done. My mother happens to be a woman as well. Uh, the older I get, I try to figure out how she raised two knucklehead kids on her own. Uh, and I have a, a, just a great appreciation uh, for the, the single moms in particular and women all over. And soon we'll hear uh, from female district leader, uh, Ranice Bishat. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Jemani Williams, and I'm the council representative for the 45th district. Uh, I want to thank Lori Cumbo, who's district grand for allowing me to be in her district, and thank you for the Brooklyn Public Library uh, for allowing us to use this space. I'm proud to co-host this evening with District Leader Bernice Bichat. Uh, she has a very, very bright future, and it's going to get brighter around September, November. Uh, now, some of you may be wondering why a male council member is hosting the Shirley Chisholm Woman Distinction Award, honoring the nine trailblazing women that you'll hear shortly. It's because I'm a very smart man. Uh, but in seriousness, Shirley Chisholm, 
a strong, powerful black woman, and she inspires me. I know she inspired many people here. Uh, is her, uh, you all know the story, she's the daughter of a Caribbean immigrant. Uh, she was born in Brooklyn. She was elected to serve uh, the New York State Assembly in 64, uh, served four years. The first black woman to Congress in 1968. She ran a historic campaign for president in 1972. Her slogan was unbought and unbossed. A slogan that is like a mantra to me, as much as I can, uh, I can try to live up to that legacy. And if you know her, you know that was true. She paved the way for countless women and girls, and men too, to enter careers in public service. Hillary Clinton, Annette Robinson, Diana Reyna, Una Clark, Yvette Clark, Laurie Cumble, just to name a few, and of course Rodney Bishop. I'm proud to serve the same part of Brooklyn where Chisholm, uh, Shirley Chisholm made her presidential run and serve as the first and one of the only black women in Congress. You all should know that I've been working to establish a new community center in my district. Uh, we have no community center in the 45th within three miles. Uh, the nearest one is in Brownsville and our young people are not going there. We'd like to call that community center the Shirley Chisholm Community Center. Okay. I do believe it is fitting time to honor those nine extraordinary women during Women's History Month, originally established in 1987. These nine honorees are game changers in fields long dominated by men, and they are, or well, you should say, they were long fronted like it was the men that were doing the work. Uh, and they are changing the way that we all think about women for the better. I want to thank the sponsors of tonight's event for the generous uh, support. We'll thank them throughout the evening and by name. And I want to thank all of my staff who we'll thank later, but there's one in particular who without this night would not have been, and that's Ms. Farrah Lewis. Ms. Farrah So I want to say thank you very much, and I would like to introduce my co-host for the evening, uh, the very woman of distinction, the very big woman of distinction. I, I should say big. What's the word? <laughs> the woman of distinction, Rodney Spichard. Thank you for the warm introduction, Councilman. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Rodney Spichard. I am the district leader of the 42nd Assembly, which covers the Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, Kensington. Um, area of Brooklyn, and I'm just really honored to be here uh, co-hosting this event um, with all of you, with uh, Jumani Williams, who's my favorite councilman, <laughs> and um, I just want to uh, say thank you to the young women who are being honored today. Uh, these women, as Jumani had mentioned, many times they're doing, they're in the front line fighting for us for, you know, rights, civil rights, uh, equity pay, whatever it may be. And we don't recognize them. And sometimes it takes, you know, it's good to recognize them. And so I'm, I'm happy that we're here to uh, recognize uh, our unsung heroes tonight uh, to continue to continue the legacy of Shirley Chisholm. As you know, Shirley Chisholm lives in us today. She's fought for us. She is branded as the person who's catalyst for change. She fought for education. She was bold. She, uh, she was unbought, un unbossed. I mean, she was everything that we try to live today for. So um, I'm really happy that Councilman Jemani William is, again, um, trying to continue the legacy with opening up the Shirley Chisholm uh, Community Center. <laughs> Let's have a look at the First Lady of New York, Charlene McRae. Hello, everyone. For that introduction. Thank you all for being here. This is so nice to be home in Brooklyn tonight. <laughs> I love this place. This library is one of my favorite places. Jamani, yes. thank you for putting this event together. Kara, you can clap. You can clap. <laughs> Jamani, you're a terrific activist, organizer. You've been a breath of fresh air on the city council ever since you've been elected. You've played a crucial role in improving police community relations. And I, I love how you did not relent. You did not relent.
lent until the Community Safety Act was passed. And when you asked me to speak at this event, I knew it would be grassrootsy and hip and forward looking because that is how you roll. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I love you here. Thank you. <laughs> I also want to thank all the other cool electeds who are here tonight. And I can't see we where you are. I don't know if uh, Scott Stringer, our controller, is here, Tish James, Annette Robinson, Deputy Borough President Diana Reyna. Just like raise your hand if you're here. And Council Member Lori Kumbo. Um, thank you all for, I know you all had a, a part in uh, supporting this event tonight. And I thank you. And this evening, I also bring greetings from my husband, our mayor, Bill de Blasio. <laughs> brag on him a little bit. Now, did you know that of all the senior appointments that have made thus far, that Mayor de Blasio has made, more than half of them are women. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, you know, I know I might be a little biased, but I think it's a wonderfully diverse leadership. And I'm going to say it again because it is just so darn unprecedented. I said more than half of the administration. I think we're actually at 54% right now. I want to try and keep it there because, again, it's never been done. And this may be, you know, the last days of Women's History Month, but it's just the beginning of women making history in the de Blasio administration. <laughs> Now, Mayor de Blasio and I extend our congratulations to all the honorees tonight. Rachel Lloyd, Angela Yee, Zakia Ansari, Linda Sarsour, Demetria Lucas, Michaela Davis, Lisa Fernandez, <laughs> Michelle McClymans, and Ella Weiss. Now, we'll hear a little bit more about each one of you in a little bit, but you are some remarkable and hard-working women. Each and every one of you has helped move our communities forward, whether through education, the arts, media, grassroots activism, you prove the power that one person has to make change. And that's a wonderful thing about being a leader. You walk through life with your head up, with a positive charge and speaking truth to power, and it's hard. It's actually really hard work. It's frustrating. It's not very glamorous. And you may never know how many lives you touch. You may never know what impact your work is going to have on others. But you get up in the morning, you get out there, and you just do it anyway. And, and that's what it's all about. Taking on challenges, putting your ideas into action, and, and making a difference. Our honorees tonight, each one of them, represent exactly the reason why women should be honored during the month of March and all year round. <laughs> so tonight I want to begin by paying homage to the strong women in my family who came before me. I wouldn't be here if it were not for them. I am, as, as some of you know, the granddaughter of immigrants. My maternal great-grandmother, my maternal grandfather, and my maternal grandmother all traveled from Barbados to the United States. <laughs> Barbados in the house. <laughs> All right. The farthest back I can trace is my great-grandmother, Louisa Paris Edwards, and let me tell you, that woman had a lot of gumption. The short story that, that I know is that she traveled, well, first she was a widow, and she had all these children. She, she traveled on a mail ship that went between the islands in the Caribbean, and she met a, a family, a wealthy family, that kind of took a liking to her, and I suppose she took a liking to them, too. <laughs> And they invited her to work for them in, in their, um, their family home in Claremont, New Hampshire. Now, she couldn't possibly have known how cold it was there. <laughs>